Hello, welcome. Today I'm going to be working on the Shimano 105 5600 3 times 10 I believe shifters. This will be part 1. I'm going to be working on the uh, 10 speeded side and then there'll be a part 2 for the uh, other shifter. Let's begin. First thing is to remove all the tension on the internal spring so shifting uh, downwards. I want to remove the lever arms from the main body so we're going to take off this tiny allen bolt right here it's going to be a number two we're now going to push that pin through uh, right there so the opposite side where there's the larger head uh, you might r need quite a bit of force to push it out <sighs> So as you can see, mine's now coming through. And now I should be able to lift it up. Okay, and that's uh, off. Now removing the arm. By removing the arm, you're also removing that tension on that spring there, the return spring. We're going to get that out of the way. So you'll notice that what the le the only thing that's blocking now is the this uh, kind of ribbon wire ribbon. I think this was for a some kind of cyclo computer that you could uh, integrate on the levers. So to take that off, we're going to remove this cover. I think in reality you can probably just cut that off if you're not actually using this, but we'll we'll do it like this anyway sake of it we can uh, pop this up and it looks like you need to pass it through here on the side there's a slow hole where you pass this through just using a pair of tweezers or whatever you can kind of stamp down the end of the wire that that ribbon and there uh, you can push through that plastic that's holding it goes through and there you go and uh, where we took off the the lever, there's two bushings. You can take them off if you're going to be going for a full clean. My levers lost the the plastic covers on the top here. It's very simple. I think it's just a screw here that you lift up and then you take that off. And then it exposes you to this nut that's attached to a bolt. And I believe this whole plastic cover from the looks of it, uh, we need to remove this and possibly this this screw here on the top so I'm going to there's a little bit of plastic that's holding that take that off and uh, here is a number it looks like a number eight so you'll need a number eight socket or potentially a wrench should be able to get that off as well so this uh, wrench does fine and it is a number number eight Still stuck, so we're going to remove this screw on the top. Okay, yeah, no, that worked. It's just it was uh, it was just uh, sticky maybe or something. So here you go. We've taken off the first cover. Top here is again a number eight, and it's yeah, it's just anti anti clockwise to remove. So now we can remove this uh, plate. There's a tip of a spring here I'm gonna remove. Okay, there you go, loosened up. That was quite tensioned as you could see. Spring removed and this plate, there's like a plasticky, I don't know, bushing part. Okay, got it off, there's another plastic nylon bushing that was inserted in here on a sleeve so there's this plastic part here that you can remove there's a tiny little screw here at the back so you need to take that off and that uh, splits splits apart this little plastic cover 
Right, here's what I wanted to show you uh, at the back. Unlike on the free speed shifter, as you can see, there's a bolt here. I've destroyed the head trying to remove this. It was so tight. And uh, it's wrapped around right here by these little magnet uh, metallic tabs. You need to bend those backwards. And that's what I did with a uh, flat headed screwdriver. Bend them out the way. And then after you can undo this, you're gonna need a good, uh, a good um, screw head to really lock into this. So now what we're going to do is just uh, remove that and that should uh, take off this uh, lever. So I've already loosened mine now, so it's not so hard anymore, but it is, it was very, very tight. You will need to put some serious, serious um, weight on it to, to remove. Okay, so that's uh, now coming off. We can now remove that, this bolt. It's actually quite loose. can take off uh, this part underneath that there's a uh, fin bushing and a spacer and in fact we can uh, there's a spring here and this uh, metal part with a copper washer underneath and finally a spring return spring okay I'm gonna take this part off now and there's another sleeve type bushing. Another pull. Spring. Spring is latched on just there in that corner. To remove that plate, there's a tiny little black clip here at the back that you need to remove. We're now going to remove the this plate here. There's a spring holding on there. We can now remove that. can remove the spring now. This circuit right here to remove. Here there's a bushing. One more bushing. Take off this pull and the spring. Take off that plate. Spring underneath. Pushing. With space underneath it. And finally, another spring and another bushing. And if that was not complicated enough, sprocket. Behind that sprocket is a copper washer and another kind of washer. Oh, cool, another nylon bushing. What have I got myself into? There's probably a good 50 parts here to reassemble. We're gonna try and attempt to do that, reassemble it. Right, I've already had to unbuild this once because I it wasn't, I missed one part out. So we're gonna put that last bushing that we took out and we're gonna seat that at the bottom of this bolt. Next, there's the spring. So that hook part that you can see on the spring is going to 
latch on to here in that corner. Right now, take this um, very thin sheet, pop it on the top, and uh, where there's that kind of slit right there, that's where you want the other tip of that spring to go in. I've had to change this three times now. I think this is going to be the right position though. Uh, when we're going to put this lever now facing down this way, you're going to want the tip of the spring to go into the hole. So the other tip of that side of that spring to go into this hole right there. And then you can, uh, you'll see there's tension on that, etc. Seed on top of that is a bushing. Next, we've got this like half, half shaped return spring. So from what I can tell when I was making my videos, one tipped going downwards into this hole here, we have that little bit there sticking out. So let's do that. So grab uh, this bit with uh, that little pivot sticking up and put it down. And eventually that other tip of that spring's kind of going in front of it here. And it's kind of giving it a slight return. I think that's what it needs to do. And then on top of this, there's a bushing, which we're going to place now. Hopefully that the return spring didn't move out of the way. So it should be like this for now. And uh, you can see that other tip, which is right there in front. Now I want to work on that pull that's going to go on here. So the hole that's just there on the right, grab the spring and uh, you don't need to install it straight away into that hole, but we are going to pull that other tip into that hole at one point. Take that pull and uh, that part, the tooth that's going downwards, that is facing downwards. So we're gonna stick that in front there and one tip of that spring is going in front of the slit of the uh, pull. And now we're going to grab just that tiny bit of the spring and we're going to pull that back into the hole. That pull will be reclining backwards now. And you want to push it all the way down eventually once we put the next parts in. Next part, there's a uh, R stamped on it and it's facing towards us. Put that down seat in between the uh, that bushing that we last put. The R is going to go in between uh, these two parts and we can recline that pull slightly to give it some space to go all the way down and seat down on that bushing. Now there's a kind of black colored bushing that seats on the top of there. Next there's this uh, plate. So it's going to be in this position facing upwards. Seat that there. So the top of that, where the uh, pivot for that pull is, it's going to go through that hole. And uh, you need to seat that all the way down. Now push all this down and there's going to be a circuit right there on the top of that pull part. Now we've got another return spring. The uh, tip on the uh, interior of that return spring is going to go into the hole here. Let's get that on. Okay, so for this, ne the next part is pretty annoying to put. So you're going to have this facing downwards, and it's there's uh, the pivot's going to be fitting through this uh, specific shape, and uh, the tip of this part is going to go into the hole here on the part of that black plate. Now what you need to do is you need to, using the arm, if everything you've done is correct, it should tension back, there'll be uh, the return spring putting it backwards. And you want it, you want all of these little four little parts here sticking out to be behind there. So when you push that kind of pivot part through the shaft, it's gonna hold all these backwards. Don't worry about that return spring that we just put in. We're going to be reclining that part in afterwards. So I'm pushing all those back, holding that lever. Oh man, that, that's fidgety. Okay, and now we're going to bring that return spring back 
underneath. So you'll just see here there's a tip now at the, uh, at the front and uh, this should be pulling back. I think this is all correct. Now on the other side here, there's a tiny little circle clip that we need to install. Okay, once we've done that, we're going to grab this spring and uh, that hook part is going to go downwards. It's going to hook behind here eventually. Next, grab the pull and we need to put the other tip of that spring in front of uh, that slot side and by lifting it up and turning, we put it into the right position. We have uh, this nylon bushing that seats on the top here. We have uh, this weird shaped part that's acting like a pivot and a pull at the same time. And that's going to go on the right side here. Next, take the spring with the short tip at the bottom. Stick that through. On top here, there's a very small white nylon bushing. Another thin bushing that runs through here. We're going to be working on the sprocket and the cam next. So there's this other bushing here, and there's one part that's square, stick it, a square shaped part that's sticking out right there. And you need to stick that uh, underneath so it slots in neatly. Underneath here, you have a few parts to stick back in. You have this very thin metal plate, and there's only one way to put that in, uh, as you'll see, like putting the uh, teeth back together again copper washer and this sprocket can only go one way okay now this sprocket is uh, going down this way so all those uh, bushings need to be kind of somewhat seated uh, for this return spring the uh, tip in the center closest to the center. I think it goes into that small little hole there on that plastic nylon part. So let's say we put that like that for now. Now I'm pretty sure from what I can tell on the video, this hook part is gonna go uh, behind this part, this metal part that we're about to put in. And at the same time while you're doing that, you also need to hook up this part behind onto the other side of uh, this part that's facing downwards. And this needs to go into that little slot there at the end. And at the same time in that hole, there's also that kind of uh, pivoting shaft part there axe that fits in. So you need to do all that at the same time. It's pretty hard to do, man. Don't forget there's a copper washer that goes before we put that metal plate. So I've already started putting it down. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this return spring to make this easier. Stick that here for now. I'm going to try and lift that up and bend that underneath. Okay, I've got that. Okay, so for the moment I've nearly done everything. I've got that part there where I need it to be. I need to get a plier though, I think, to really push this part down because it's quite stuck on that shaft. I think this is going to go actually on this part. I'm, I'm certain. I think it, lo it looks like it's going that way. So I'm going to need to push that through this gap here. And then uh, so it hooks up onto here. At worst, if it needs to hook up there, it will hook up there. So there you can see I'm nearly getting it through that gap. Let's try and catch it there. Yeah, got it. Right, so quick look. Uh, yes, I mean, it's looking like this. You have that part there that's hooked up now underneath here. I did have to pry all this down at the same time. 
The uh, other tip of that spring for this pull is located there, just hooked up. So now we've got this uh, washer to stick on top of this and a, another bushing. So now we've got this plastic part. There's a little slot right there and that, that plastic bit there is going to go into the seat into it. Same for that. Another washer on the top here, from the looks of it. Let's uh, put that nut down. Let's uh, tighten that down. For the uh, wiring, so it's going to go passing up here. You had this little metal clip thing that uh, goes over the ribbon. There you go. Right, well we can put the lever back on. Now you're gonna remember just here there was that this uh, screw that I completely somewhat destroyed, and uh, it's going to fix on behind here. So let's install that on. So there's that part here of the top of the pull, the pivot. That's gonna go into the other hole here on the side. So let's all put this through. And uh, we're gonna need to recline that back and uh, fit that through. And uh, you can kind of pry back those uh, metallic parts at the back. All right, so now we've got this uh, plastic cover that was uh, going through the side here. So it roughly goes like this, and I believe this uh, ribbon went underneath that part there. So we need to slot that underneath. And on the other side, there's this plastic part as well, and we need to now screw that together. A little screw right there. Okay, here you have a bushing that slides through and a, uh, then there's a nylon one that seats in between all of that. You can uh, push that down. On top of this is going to be this uh, plastic part here with uh, some form of uh, teeth. Next we've got this spring. So the little bit that's uh, sticking downwards is gonna go into that right hole. So now we've got this little part here to put back on, whoops. And it's uh, facing up here, so towards the, the lever. And you have a tip of that plastic nylon part that goes into, uh, goes into it right there. And at the same time, we're gonna have to take that hook part of the spring, and I think we're gonna need to turn it around up to this side. I'm gonna see if I can put putting down this bolt, it's gonna make it easier to hold all these parts down when I'm doing this. Uh, got it on, that is really hard to do. All right, after all that, I just realized I put the wrong nut on, so I'm gonna have to remove this, but I think uh, just holding it down should uh, keep uh, the, the spring in place. So it's really it, truly this one that goes on to here. Then you've got the uh, cover that we can uh, put back on now. Once you've fully seated the uh, cover properly on, there's this screw that was here. And then uh, that bolt that I removed before goes here. You can definitely put some uh, Loctite if you want. We're going to now do the next hard part of the, of, uh, the assembly. Uh, there's going to be this long bushing that's going to go on this side. And on the other side, there's the shorter plastic bushing. So we seat those two together. Then there's the um, there's going to be return spring. So the part that's uh, longer with a kind of hook, that's going to go into the, the hole here on the right. And 
and you want it to go right there to the edge like I've done. So normally there's a uh, Shimano tool that you can uh, buy for this, but essentially the other tip of that spring is going to eventually be pushing against uh, this part here on the plastic hood right there. Now the difficulty is being able to tension that spring back and putting it in the right position when you're installing this. So what I found to do and I, and I managed to get it to work is, so to do that without the tool, what I found to, is uh, taking a 1.5 Allen key wrench and what you do is you pretty much stick it in front, just there in between the, uh, that rod that's going through the lever here and the spacing of the tip of that spring. And what you do is you, you pretty much just seat that there. And then when we're gonna put the, um, when we're going to start to install the plastic cover into the right position, you're going to tension that spring backwards so it's slipping, but it doesn't slip once you put it in there. You're going to tension that spring backwards. And then once you're in the right place with the uh, plastic cover when we're installing it, you can then after remove the, the Allen key from uh, the position. And then that tip of that spring will be seated in the right, correct place. And then after, make sure you have a wrench ready to put the main pin going through here because you're going to have that tension of that spring that's going to be pushing this out of the way. So you really want that ready to be able to insert it. So now I'm going to try and demonstrate that on camera. It's best laying it uh, flat on this side so that the uh, spring kind of stays in the right uh, place. It doesn't fall out from, from underneath. Okay, now I'm pushing all the way down, and now I'm going to release the Allen key. <coughs> all right, got that out. Now get the uh, pin ready and the wrench. Hold this all with your hand. The For the pin, get that part that's uh, smooth, and you're going to insert it onto the side where we just put that spring. grab it from the other side and try and push up uh, move it about uh, for it to go straight through we're getting there all right just to check that that's working before I yeah and it's uh, it's working perfect as for the ribbon uh, you're going to now need to aim and uh, get it to go through that hole Okay, so I did get it to go through, but uh, ultimately, yeah, it would have been easier to have uh, put this before I to put the uh, lever on. I just wasn't really thinking about that. So, uh, well, you can uh, you can do that before you install it. But I don't really think this has much use anymore. And that's through. Stick the uh, cover back on. Don't forget to put the um, that bolt underneath the lever for it essentially to stay in place. And uh, and put the cover back on. You'll have that hood or cover to put back on here, the face cover using a screw on the top here. I don't have that so I can't demonstrate so is it working yes it is working fine so i hope this helped you repair your shimano 105 shifter and um, until next time for the part two and i'll get onto the free speed eventually this took quite a long time so uh, you can uh, i think you'll have to be patient for that uh, peace out